The Tribe Podcast Show is a production of Kangaroo Fern Media Lab, which is all about supporting you to start and build a thriving business. Tribe Podcast on Ozpod Syndicate. Our guest for today, she is a Finpire coach, a business leader who is dedicated to helping women to succeed as a entrepreneurs. She is a process-driven strategist who has visionary problem solving and skills and managed to raise a family of five children while running a successful business. Oh, that's a lot. I cannot do that. <laughs> I think only my wife can do that, not me. <laughs> Welcome everybody to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello, Humanista. This is Mika Santos. And thank you for listening to yet another episode of the Tribe Podcast under Ospod Syndicate. So this program is brought to you by Kangaroo Firm Media Lab, a podcast management service. So if you wanted to start a podcast or you already have a podcast, and you want to level up, so contact the Kangaroo Firm Media Lab at www.kangaroofirm.com. Please <laughs> welcome Samantha Morris. Please welcome to the podcast. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Miko. How are you? Good. So what is Finpire? So Finpire is an organization that was started by Marnie Lefebvre. And it's all about helping women in business to really grow and be successful uh, at what they do because, you know, there are so many women in small business. And as we have found out this year, small business really is the backbone of our economy. So we're all about trying to help women in business be successful, learn what they need to know, feel really supported in what they're doing and yeah, that's that's kind of summing it all up there. So is it hard to find a perfect business coach? It can be hard to find a perfect business coach because when you think about getting a business coach, there are so many of us out there and you really have to find the right one for you. So that all kind of starts with working out what you think you might need because there are business coaches that do specialize in specific areas of business and when you work out what you think you might need you then have to find the right person for you because you know you work really closely with a business coach and you know sometimes we have to tell people things you know some really hard truths about their business and it can be hard to take so if you've got a really good relationship with your coach then you're kind of going to listen with ears that are going to accept what's being said as opposed to someone that you don't feel like you can work with and you kind of might resent what they've got to say so you said when I started doing my initial research and into becoming a coach, I was saddened with the number of people who, who were disappointed with their business coaching experience. Why did you say, say that? Oh, because my motivations for becoming a coach were all about helping people. And when I was looking at the industry and getting an idea of what I was getting myself in for as a coach, it made me really sad that there were so many people that had just had that really bad experience. And it boils down to a number of things why that can happen. And the first one, as we just talked about, is about finding the right coach for you. But it's also about managing the expectations of what you can achieve when you're working with your coach. And there's something that a lot of people don't think about when they start on this journey with a business coach and that is that you've actually got to do a lot of work 
and and the business coach doesn't do the work for you that's what you have to do as a business owner so you've got to get all those things right for the relationship with the business coach to work and be really successful your podcast journey starts here take the first step on your side hustle with us it starts with a great domain get your podcast web host with beard and coffee at www beardandcoffee.com.au or find us at Facebook. Some people say, what's the difference between a business coach versus a consultant? What's the difference? Is that the same or there's a a big difference? Yeah, there is a really big difference. And, And I always like to use this story of a swimming coach. So if you imagine, you know, like, because I love watching the swimming when it's on the Olympic and you see the coaches and they're on the sidelines and they're yelling and they're cheering and, you know, and part of the coach's job is to make sure that the swimmer's using the right techniques and working on developing their strengths and all that sort of stuff. But they're not in the pool swimming for you. They stand on the sidelines, they give you advice they correct you, they do all of those things, but you have to jump in the water and do the swimming. Whereas if you get a consultant, a consultant actually will do some work for you. So they will work out some of the things you need and they will do some of that work. So the business already get lazy. Is that <laughs> <laughs> because the consultant do everything for them. Yeah, so... yeah, you're, you're paying them to do the work, yeah. So on the theme part, so it's it's a female focused business coaching and training and a guidance it, for a female entrepreneurs. Yes. Why it's it? Is that because a lot of female entrepreneurs doesn't know what they're doing compared to the counterpart, the male counterpart? What we've worked out, and we've probably seen quite a few good examples of just how differently women and men do things. And some of those examples have really shone through this year with some of the world leaders. And if you look at, for example, Jacinta Arden and how she has managed New Zealand versus, you know, Donald Trump and how he's managed America, two very, very different styles. So what we've, what we've worked out is that women do things differently. We learn differently. You know, our, our thought processes are a little bit different. We have different responsibilities and, you know, it's not the same in every house, but quite often, you know, we've got our business, but we're still the main one that's doing things around the house and looking after children and family. So we've got different things to manage as opposed to men. And so what we do with Fempire is we create a space for women to really tap into what makes them special and what, you know, we teach in a way that women can really, really learn and take in what they need to know. So, yeah, that's what we focus on women for those reasons because we we are all women, all the Fempire coaches are women, so we know what's going on with these women. You know, we've been there and we've done it. And now we're going to help women to get through what they're facing in business. So there's another quote that you've done on your article as well. I'm just going to um, say that for you and mm-hmm. tell to the audience. So, so you said on one of your articles that reflection is an important part of understanding yourself, understanding what makes you happy and realize who you really are. Can you elaborate that? Can you explain to us? Yeah, gosh, you've, you've got some good little quotes there. That's, that's really good. Yeah, look, I think that unless we can reflect on who we are and get a real sense of ourselves, from there we can work out what success looks like for us and we can understand why we do certain things the way we do and we can understand our motivations now when you when you have an understanding of all of those things that's when you can really focus your energy towards doing positive things that's when you can fo- focus your energy into things that make you really happy so yeah re- reflecting on who you are and really what we focus on is what we can really grow and nurture so we reflect so that we can understand ourselves and then we can look to the future 
and know that we're driving in the right direction. As a, as a business coach, how did you tell to your client about this reflection? This podcast is brought to you by Ospad Syndicate, powered by Kangaroo Fern Media Lab. Kangaroo Fern is Australia's independent video and podcast management agency with a mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs to start their own podcast and harness the power of podcasting. Book now via www.kangaroofern.com. Yeah, look, it can be really overwhelming, for, particularly for startups, because there is so much information out there and there are so many people telling you, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. So where I like to start with people who are starting out in business is, first of all, understand why they want to get into business in the first place. And I ask some hard questions and they questions that people they're hard to answer because people don't generally think about it and the first one is what does success look like to you because when you're starting in a business you know you might have this image in your head but most of the time people are thinking about money but money can't buy happiness and so that can kind of be like a, a, you know walking on a treadmill and not, you're not going to get anywhere So if you can figure out why you want to be in business, what parts of the business you are going to be good at, what you need to learn and what you need to do, and then take the focus away from just earning so many dollars. I mean, I know you've got to earn money in your business. We've all got to eat. We've all got to have a roof over our heads. But if you're not happy, if it's making you miserable, then you've got to question why you're in that business. And, you know, there are a lot of times when I ask the questions of people, you know, why do you want to do this? What what is it you really want to be spending your time on? Sometimes they'll do a 180 and they'll actually start a totally different business, one that's going to actually make them happy and, and make them money, of course. But, you know, you've got to make yourself happy in what you're doing. You're going to invest all your time and energy into something. Why not enjoy it? So you're saying you have to have a passion on... Yes, you do. (laughs) But, yeah, that word is thrown around a lot, passion. But, um, yeah, if if you're not energised to get up and go to work, then you've got to question if you're doing the right kind of work. So... As I said, you said on you said as well before that you must be able to adapt, call on regulation, bend them so that you can achieve the desired end result. So, for for a startup, for a newbie, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. So, how, as a business coach, how would you? Well, first thing, what what is the sign of being an entrepreneur? Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Oh gosh, there are quite a few personality traits that most entrepreneurs have. And um, some of those are things like, you know, you're not taking no for an answer because as an entrepreneur, you're going to get quite a few knockbacks. in in trying to build a business. So you have to be able to withstand that. Uh, You need to be able to communicate quite well with people because as an entrepreneur, you've got to be able to sell, you've got to be able to market, you've got to be able to, you know, sometimes maybe you need outside investment. So you need to be able to be okay with uh, talking to people about business. Uh, You need a certain amount of resilience and you certainly need to be creative. So there, there's some of the signs that you might be cut out to be an entrepreneur. Um, you need to be willing to sort of stand up for your business because, you know, <laughs> we're on social media and, you know, from our customers, sometimes they aren't happy with the, the product or service that they've got. And, and so they're the ones that you generally hear from, you know. The, the ones that are happy don't normally say anything. The ones that aren't happy 
are the ones that are knocking on your door or on social media telling everybody how awful you are. So you've got to have that resilience to be able to cope with that. But yeah, being creative, like that is the best part of any entrepreneur, I think, is that creative side. And whether that's about, um, you know, creating strategies or creating a product or creating a service or creating a customer journey, it's all imagination. So I have an idea, but I don't know where to start. What, 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 is, your, what, what is your step or guide to, to them? Can yeah. you help me? Yeah, look, I, there's, a, there's a whole big checklist of things that you need to do. But if, you, if you're just starting with that idea, the first thing that you need to do is to do a bit of research and work out whether that idea is going to be one that could potentially be profitable. And there are no guarantees that your research is going to, you know, mean that you're going to get good results or it mean that you're going to be successful. But the first thing you need to work out is, are people actually going to be willing to pay for whatever it is that my business idea is? Because if they're not, then you don't have a business. So that, that is the first starting point. So you need to have, so, so you're saying you need to have to research first. Make sure. Do your research first. Yeah. Yeah. And not just, I mean, when I say research, that means don't just go and ask your family and friends, hey, do you think this is a good idea? Because those people might buy from you once, but, you know, they're doing that because they're doing you a favour and because you're their friend. You've got to do more research than that. You've got to do some industry research. You've got to look at, you know, how many other people are doing this in my area? And, you know, there's the Bureau of Statistics that'll give you really good industry information and tell you whether it's a growth industry or not. So you need to look beyond your own little circle. Do you also experience that they didn't realise that they're already a business owner or entrepreneur? Are you an entrepreneur without even realizing it? You, you could be. You could be. There is a difference between just being a business owner and being an entrepreneur. And I think that difference lies in the way you behave inside your business. Uh, you may have started a business and, you know, I'll use, I'll use a, a tradesperson as an example. You may be a plumber, for example, and you've gone out on your own. So essentially you're a business owner, but entrepreneurship takes business ownership that step further. So it's about creating new things and it's about growth and, and about a lot more than just I own a business and I go and I work every day. We are Independent Podcast Network. We are Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Would you like to hear your brand while supporting quality podcasts? Contact us now at advertise at guerrillapodcastsyndicate.com. Okay. So the other question I have is that do you think they still like a gender gap on, on this industry? Yeah, there, there is a gender gap but maybe not in the way that people might think. So the gender gap, I think, comes from the types of businesses that people start. So women will gravitate to certain industries and men will gravitate to other industries. So there are some that we have crossed over, but generally, you know, there are some businesses that, are, you know, there is quite high female ownership and there are some businesses that are dominated by male ownership. So there's that gap and the different industries, they have different benchmarks for how much they earn. So when we talk about, uh, you know, that women don't earn as much as men, for example, well, to a certain extent that comes from the type of industries that you choose to work in. So there are gaps there, but they're not insurmountable. And sometimes they're just a product more of what you choose to do. And it's not really about being a man or a woman. It's just, you know, where you sit in the broader landscape. The, the, the last question is that, can you give us like help and tips on starting your own business? What is the three, say, what is the three things you need to know before you want to jump on on the entrepreneurship 
Because a lot of yeah. people say, uh, because it's pandemic, oh, uh, there's a lot of online business. So I uh, get that. I get that. So what do you think your three, three things or five things that you need to know before you jump on on this industry? Perfect. Yeah. So first of all, like we discussed is do some market research. That's number one. The next thing that I would suggest you do is um, do that reflection and understand where you're coming from and what it is you want to achieve with your business. Um, Another really important thing to do is to work out your target market because A lot of things that you need to do in business, such as work out your marketing and things like that, really they they need to be based on a certain target market. So, for example, if you're, you know, doing marketing on social media, you need to understand your target market to know which platform they're on so that you're not spending time, for example, on, on TikTok when most of the people that you would sell to would be found on Facebook. So you need to understand your target market. And then the last thing I think people really should understand before they launch anything is how they're going to price and how they're going to um, put their product together. So I think there are a few basics you need to have before you get started. So you're saying that you need to learn the art of sales and marketing. Well, you don't have to be an expert at it, but you do need a little. You do need a little bit of education to get the ball rolling. So, um, yeah, that that's where you go and get a coach to help you work all that stuff out. All right, that's uh, thank you for that. So, any parting word before we uh, wrap up the the podcast, so that if anyone, if any listener and our audience is listening right now and viewing this podcast, how they can contact you. Parting words from me would be that if you've got an idea for a business or you think you want to start one, um, re- reach out to someone, like reach out to me or reach out to somebody, you know, that you think might have good information for you, another coach. But, yes, yeah, certainly me um, if you're a woman. <laughs> and um, because business coaches, most of us offer a free 30-minute conversation or a free 30 minute business session and that can be a really great place to start to get some questions answered and just to get some guidance on on what to do first for your particular business so that's a great place to start for people and that's what I would recommend you know listening to what the person's advice is that lives next door to you may not be the greatest move (laughs) So, yeah, talk to somebody that's got a bit of experience and some knowledge and they can help you out. So um, my my website is samanthamorris.fempirecoach.com.au if anybody's interested in getting in touch. All right. Thank you for that. So all the links will be putting on the show notes. So please make sure to check that. And also, thank you for, for your time, Samantha. And... Hope our listener and audience will get out of it and learn from it. So if you want to contact Samantha, we'll put all the details on the show notes. And thank you for that. Thank you for for your time. And thank you for another episode of Tribe Podcast. And see you next week for another exciting training and learning from our different guests. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you for your time for another episode of Tribe Podcast under Osport Syndicate. Thank you to our sponsor, Kangaroo Firm Media Lab, a podcast management service. You can check them at www.kangaroofirm.com. And also, if you want to join our community, so follow us on the Facebook at Rebounds Australia. Thank you. Or check our website at www.ospodsyndicate.com.au Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Ospad Syndicate. Powered by Kangaroo Fern Media Lab. Kangaroo Fern is Australia's independent video and podcast management agency with a mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs to start their own podcast. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit our website at www ospodsyndicate.com.au where you can subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts, 
Google Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. You can also join the conversation with OSPOD Syndicate on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please consider on making a donation to help us keep making the podcast you love. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us.